in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you. seated tonight. Praise God. You know, we were talking to today for a little bit, we're talking how the Word of God, I think it was today or yesterday, how the Word of God should penetrate our hearts. The, the Word of God is spirit. It's a spiritual word. It, it's not a. It's not a natural word. It's not a. Just a common word. The Bible you hold in your hands is a spiritual book. It's it's a book of life. And sometimes, I've seen people treat that book like it's just a book. But I want you to know that it's more than a book. It's a book of life. And so a lot of people sometimes in a church, they want to interpret the word to their own benefit. And, and I kind of mentioned that last, last week, we cannot do that. We have to interpret the word for what it means, for what it says, and we have to accept it. 
You know, Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah or Jeremiah, but I think it was Isaiah, he said, I ate your book. I ate it. I ate the words. And they were bitter. He said, but once they got in sight of me and had their way in me, they were sweet. The, the word of God is so powerful, church, that you and I, you know, sometimes we, we miscalculate what, what the Lord is saying. Imagine the Bible says it like this before we go to the word of God here. What I got, I want them to go right through to John chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 1. Because it's a powerful, a powerful scripture, but we, we read it or we read it so much in our Bible that it's just another word. Instead of a, a word that penetrates my heart. That causes me to see who I am serving. Who I live for. Who is my God? Who is my Lord? Who's my Savior? Are you with me, church? So he says, in the beginning, before all time, before anything. Now imagine what he's saying there. In the beginning, before all time. He didn't say before all creation. He said before all time. Before there was anything there, including time. God has no time. We have a time. We have clocks on our walls. We have wristwatches on our, our wrists because we got to walk by a time limit. You know, we gotta, we're always limited, but God don't have that. That's why he says a thousand years is like one day and one day like a thousand years because to him it's all the same. Are you hearing me tonight? So, so look what he says here. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word. And the Word was Christ. Was the Word. La Palabra. And when, and when you look at this, when you look at this, you'll find that the word, there's, there's three, three in one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just like you're a three, threefold person. Are you with me? The difference between you and God, or you and I and God, is that God can separate himself, but you and I can't. If you take your spirit out of you, you're dead. Anybody home? Because you're a human being. You're not, you're not God. All right? But look what he says. In the beginning, there before all time, was, was the Word. La Palabra was the Word. Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God himself. Read that. I'm not giving it to you out of my interpretation. You, all you got to do is read the spiritual book of God. It's right there. Is there anybody with me? Look at this. Go with me to Hebrews, I think, chapter 2. Well, I'm just taking you through a little, a little foundation right now so that we can have something to hang on to, okay? But Hebrews chapter 2 Since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention. How many know a lot of us, we, we, we have a hard time paying attention? 
you up and down, in and out of the bathroom, going to the hallway. You're, you're over there trying to meet with your friend and, and find out what's happening in her life. And, and you, you're doing like, like if you're the most important person above God. Ain't that a trip? You won't see me doing that. I don't need to go out there and talk to nobody. I want to, I want to be right here where the presence of God is. Anybody with me? I mean, we come to church because this is God's house. God abides here. The Word, the living Word, which is Christ, abides right here by the Holy Spirit. Are you with, are you with me tonight? He's right here. Brother, he's right here. You walked in on him. Walked right into his house. And you know something about the Word? The Word can see right through all of us. And yet he loves you. When I was a kid, we used to play hide and seek. How many of you used to play that when you were a kid? Come on, you know you used to play that. Hide and seek. And, and uh, we'd have somebody try to find us, and we'd be hiding. And, and if the one he caught would have to be in again. Well, imagine, imagine the, word, the word is able to see right through us. It doesn't matter what we hide. He seeks it out. And how many know he can take that away? He can cleanse it. He can wash it. He can set us free. He's a powerful God. Hallelujah. Let's go on. For if the message given through angels, the law spoken by them to Moses, was authentic and proved sure, and every violation and disobedience received an appropriate, just, and adequate penalty. For look at this. For if the message given through angels, the law spoken by them to Moses. Can you imagine the, the, a lot of the, these people that never, never made it because and they didn't know how to. They didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to how to serve the Lord. Are you with me? It was hard. Anybody home? It's, it's like me telling brother, brother, right here, to brother. Uh, I don't want you to kiss your wife for the next thirty years because you'll break the law. Huh? He he already broke the law. Ah, it was impossible. Listen, it was impossible to, to obey the law. You, they couldn't do it. And, 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 and I want you to know something. Look at me over here. He knew what was inside of them. From the very beginning of time, the Lord knew they could not do it. Anybody home? Now look at this. We're living in the same time today. They used to tell Moses, Moses, you go up there and meet with God and then you tell us what God wants us to know. Huh? It's no different today. People go to church. No, they don't meet with God. They don't nothing. They, they don't even have a, an altar call. They don't have nothing for them, and they they, they just go and, and sing and and all that and 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 hear a little word and then they go home and 
but never, never made it to the top with Moses was. That's heavy duty. Huh? That's heavy duty. Let's see verse 3. And he says, how shall we escape? This is in the New Testament. This is after Jesus already died on the cross. Is that a trip? How shall we escape appropriate retribution if we neglect and refuse to pay attention to such a great salvation? How are we going to escape if we neglect such a great salvation? I'm going to, I'm going to be showing you some scripture in just a moment because most of us put God on a, on a certain level. What I mean by that is... Uh, I got certain things that are priority for me. And somewhere in there is God. I just got to move the debris out of the way. See, somewhere in there, God is there. But for, for, for look, look at this, look at this. That young couple right there, look at this. They're in love. You know how I know? I was sitting up there, and when he walked in, I saw you kiss him. I don't see nobody else do that. <laughs> You're already tired of it. But look at this. They're in love, but look at this. But he can't put her first. And she can't put him first. The one that has to be above that is God. Yeah. Well, you better give him praise. You know why? Because if, if you don't, whatever you put first is going to put God in another level down below. And it will not be as effective, and it will not be as important, and it will not mean much to you. And that's what's happening in our country today, all over, all over, where, where the Lord is being put at another level instead of being first. How many remember when you first got saved? Oh, brother, what a powerful time. What a, a brother, I never in my life felt anything like it. From when, the, when I first got saved, it was everything. Was it, was it the best thing you ever had in your life? Is it still the best thing you've ever had in your life? Nothing else can take its place. Listen to me. Nothing else can take its place. Jesus Christ must be number one above everything in our life. Now look at this. In the beginning was what? What? The Word. The Word. And the Bible says in that in John 1, verse 14, it says, and the Word became flesh. Ah. Yeah. Jesus. was Jesus that came to die for us. Hey. The Word of God, the Word, imagine, was crucified for us. The, the living Word, say the living Word. That the one that gives you life, the one that gives you blessing, the one that gives you everything you need in life was crucified for you and me. Praise God. And, and he did it willingly. It wasn't so, he wasn't forced to do that. He did it willingly. You know what he said? He said, no one takes my life. I lay it down. Said, I lay it down freely, 
and I'm taking it back up too. Oh, Jesus. Is there anybody here? You know what he did in that time? Look at, look at me. You know what he did in all that time? You know what he did? He put you first. Hey, he put you first. And so he says, I want you to do the same for me. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. We used to sing a song like that before. What a powerful God we serve. Putting God first. Look at this. Go, go with me up there to Hebrews chapter 2. Well, I mean 1. In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. He spoke to everybody through the prophets, through the prophets, through the prophets. Listen to me. A lot of people want to be prophets. They go to school to be prophets. They go to all kinds of Listen to me. Don't fall for all that baloney. If God calls somebody to be a prophet, he's going to rise up with God. I believe that David Wilkerson was a prophet. I believe he was a prophet. I believe that Leonard Raven Hill was a prophet. You know, there's been only certain men that have the trait of a, of a real prophet. And a real prophet, listen to me, a real prophet will never want to exalt themselves up above anything. Are you with me? Están conmigo. Look at this. Let's go on. But in the last day, the last of these days, he has spoken to us. Look at this. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of his, of his son. He used to speak to him through prophets, through prophets. Anytime a prophet would go through a city and he had the leather belt on. They called it a leather girdle. When, when the people would see that belt or that girdle, they knew he was a prophet of God. So he would start walking and they knew immediately he had a word for them from the Lord and they didn't know whether it was going to be good or bad. Somebody one day said that in the New Testament, the only thing God's going to do is give you a good word. No, no, listen, listen to me. Listen, He's your Father. He's your Heavenly Father. If He's got to, if He's got to check you out, man. If He's got to, if He, remember I said He knows everything about you. If He's got to, not to, not not galas. If He's got to spank you, He will. Hey. Are you with me? All right. So look at this. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son who will be appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. He's talking about Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. The, word. the Word. Jesus, the Word. Jesus, the Word. Look at this. Also, by and through whom he created the worlds. Remember, we, we, we saw that a little while ago? In the beginning was the word. Now look at this. And the reaches of space and the ages of time. They were saying the other day that they just discovered new galaxies they never knew were there. 
Well, guess who knew they were there because he created them. Oh, praise God. Jesus, Jesus, help us. And look at this. He made, produced, built, operated, and arranged them in order. What a powerful God. Right? That's, that's who you serve. He's, he's trying to get you to understand that's who you serve. That's who brought you. That's who loved you more than anything in the world that he came and gave his life for you. Look at verse 3. He is the soul. Now look at this. This is powerful. He is the soul expression. My, my pastor used to say, the Godhead is like an egg. You got the shell, the yolk, and the white. Or the yellow, whichever. You got the three. And it's only one egg. He used to say that to us, okay? And, but I was never satisfied with that. I wanted to know where he came from. I wanted to know what it was. And here the word of God tells us where Jesus came from. Look at this. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. Remember the disciples asked him, Lord, when are you going to show us the Father? And he said, you mean I've been with you so long and you haven't seen him yet? Has yeah. yeah. anybody ever told you, man, you look just like your mama or you look just like your daddy? Yeah. Look at this. The light being the outrain or radiance of the divine, and he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature, yeah. upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. This is what he's saying. Look at, look at me here. Body, soul, and spirit. God the Father, the body. God the Son, the soul. Came out. Came out from the Father. The radiance. The light. Was pushed out. Are you with me? Was just brought out. Right out of the Father. Came the sun. Oh, you better hear me tonight. And, and you're in his presence tonight. Praise God. Some people go to religion, sister. But you're in the presence of God. What a powerful thing. Not everybody gets to do that. I wish they all did, but... Look at this. When he had, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high when he came and gave his life on the cross. And he resurrected, when he defeated the devil. I said, he defeated the devil. He broke every bondage. He broke every chain. He broke every hindrance. He broke every, come on. He destroyed the works of the devil. What a powerful God. The Word. Now, now look at this. Go with me to 1 John 3, 8. 
I'm not even starting my message yet. I'm still laying my platform. Hallelujah, look at this. But he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil. Now look, look at me over here. There's a lot of people out there, man, just living their lives in the world and in sin and in every kind of, all kind, every kind of thing there is in the world. Now look at me. And they want to tell you they're saved. But here's the word. Here's the word. This is the word. Look what it says. But he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil. Takes his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned or violated the divine law from the beginning. Now look at this. This is what's powerful. This is what's powerful. Look at this. The reason the Son of God was made manifest. The reason he came out of the Father. The Word came out of the Father. The reason was to go to Calvary for you and I. The reason the Son of God was made manifest or visible was to undo. Look at this. To undo to break every chain of darkness, to destroy the works of the devil. When, when you know Jesus, look at me, look at me. Christians, I want you to hear me, I want you to look at me. When you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is hard for you to say a lie. When you say a lie... Brother, you feel so bad, you go find a place to cry and ask forgiveness. Why? Because the one that came to the world came to undo. He came to undo all the works of the devil. There is no one, listen to me, there is no one that can say, I can't serve the Lord. I, I can't stop. I can't help myself. No, listen to me. You don't want to stop. You don't want to. Listen to me. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. He will deliver you from your bondage. Praise His mighty name. Hallelujah. Look at this. The reason the, the Son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo, and that means to destroy, to loosen, and dissolve the works of the devil. Oh, listen to me. The works of the devil he had done to get rid of it. Say it with me, to get rid of it. So, so imagine, look look at me. Uh, we're going to go somewhere with this tonight because this is heavy duty. What do you think, brother? It's heavy duty, huh? God's already speaking to you. I know that. Look at this. Look at this. I want you to hear me. When you and I put God second or third or fourth or somewhere in the mix. Well, if I have time. I hear Christians say that all the time. If I have time, I'll, make, I'll go to church. If I don't, I won't. And I'm saying, wow. Well, what's, what's occupying your time from getting to church? Something, something is in there. Come on. You, you may be the only one that knows, but something is in there that's hindering you. Está conmigo. Something 
is stopping a lot of people. Something is stopping a lot of people from really, from really serving the Lord. And what these people don't realize, look at me, look at me. They say, well, I'm saved. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. And I'm saying, wow, that's cool. That's cool. You want God to put you first, don't you, lady? And they say, oh, yes, yes. I said, well, what about you putting God first? But I want to guarantee you something. When that trumpet sounds, they're going to want to be lifted up, and they're not going to. He's got to be your life. Tiene que ser tu vida. Jesucristo, Jesus Christ, has got to be what you live for. He's got to be your life. Come on, your life. You know how you know when you're, you're getting cold? You know how you know when you're, you're drifting and putting God somewhere in the shuffle? You, 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 you love him. You, know, you, you, you love him, but you're not in love with him by that time. Okay? It's like somebody that tells a girl, I love you. Yeah, I love you. You know I love you. Yeah. No, but I don't want to know if you love me. Are you in love with me? Well, I, I do, but... Well, they give me your little black book so I can burn it. <laughs> and then they say, Oh, no, I threw it away a long time ago. It's right in your back pocket. <laughs> hey, you won't catch any preacher in town talking to you the way I do. But it's all true. But it's all true. It's not lies. It's true. It were, it's right where we're at. I, imagine he put us first. God. He put me first. When I was in my mess, put me first. Yeah. What a trip. Well, are you going to church? Well, I don't know. Let me, let me see. I, I don't know. I, that, I might not go tonight. I might not go to. Okay. Ah, oh, but when something happens, church. You know how I know the Lord wants you here? Can I tell you? How, how I know God wants you in his house? I'm going to give you an illustration one time. I was, I, was, I was saved. I was newly saved. I must have been saved maybe about, about six months. And uh, I was watching the Broncos play. Way back then, the Broncos were playing. No, no, don't clap for him. Don't clap for him. <laughs> Now look at this, look at this, look at this. They were playing, and it was getting close to the time to, for me to get up, go to church. I was kicked back in a recliner, brother. That was, man, that thing was so comfortable. Oh, I was there, and I said to myself, uh, I don't think the Lord will mind if I don't go tonight. I'll, I'll just stay right here. And all of a sudden, I heard the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit told me, get up and go to church. The devil is trying to rob you. I said, my God. He said, go to church right now. So I jumped up, ran out of the house without a jacket, without my Bible, without nothing, and took off to the church. Yes, 
Are you with me? So, see, you see, look, look at me. Look at me. Christian, we sometimes make God or we take God very lightly in our lives. Well, I'm not smoking. I'm not drinking. I'm not drugging. I'm not, I'm not doing all kinds of crazy stuff out there. I don't think God will mind. No, no, no. You hear me tonight. He's got to be first. Say it with me, primero. All you gringos from the America say, primero. Y luego todos ustedes de Venezuela digan, God first. Huh? Oh, Father, help me tonight. Lord, help me preach this the way it's supposed to be preached. The, the word, the word has got to be first. Came out so he could destroy the works. Your Bible might say the works of the devil. He came to do that in our lives, in every one of us. He came to destroy the works of the devil. So look at this. Look at this. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. And you know what he does? You know how good our God is? Who said that? Oh, you're over there. <laughs> I don't know if the rest of them want to know. You know how good our God is? That he gives you the right to decide whether you want to put him first or not. You can keep going the way you are and put him second or third or fourth. Or you can say, no. I remember when I first got saved, he was first. Everything was, he was first. I got to get back to that. How many understand that? We got to get back to that. Is there anybody home? You know what he says in the book of Revelations? You can find it later because uh, I don't want to take too much time. But look what he says. He tells the church, you're doing everything. It looks good. Oh, he says. He says, you, you dress right. You look good. You don't, you don't cuss like you used to. You don't do none of those things. He said, but I have one thing against you. He said, you left your first love. Do you remember when you first got saved? I remember, man, it was back in, imagine, 1973. That's, some, that's even older than some of you before you were born. Is that a trip? And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And I still remember. Oh, my God. Brother, I said, I've never in my life realized how powerful, how beautiful it is to serve the Lord. And look at this. I put God first in everything. And, and look at me, look at me. And not everybody, not everybody like that. Not everybody like that. But I wasn't serving everybody. I was serving the one that came to die for me on the cross. 
Hey! Are you serving him? He's, he's, he's the one that has to be number one. So look at this. Look at this. In, in chapter 4, verse, verse 4. But he replied, now this is the word talking. It has been written, man shall not live, look at this, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone. Food, look, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. By food, we have to labor and work hard. We got to get two, three jobs. We're always trying to get more money and we're always trying to buy more and we're always trying to do this and do that and everything. And look what he's saying. Man shall not be sustained by that alone. Look at me. But by every word that, that come on, look at this. But by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God, from that Bible you have, from the Word! Lord, look at this. That word sustained means this. This is, you think you got to meet your own needs and you got to meet this and meet that and you got to do this and do that and everything. But if you put God first, if you serve the Lord first, you put God first, listen to me. He will sustain you. He will make a way. He will provide. He will open doors no man can shut. He will do what no other can do. Oh, you need to give him praise. I know some of you don't like it because, because that's all you've been doing for a long time. But if you were to really break into the Lord and ask him, Lord, is Pastor Ray telling the truth? Let me tell you something. He'll tell you yes. <laughs> look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. No, I can't tell you this because... My Lord, what about my feelings, Lord? And the, and the, and the Lord says, hey, well, what about mine? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, Pastor. You're too hardcore with this tonight. You need to, you need to, you need to be light, light, lighten up a little bit. Let's, let's, let's be secret friendly for a while. <laughs> oh, you look so beautiful. You look, I had a guy one time, me and Pastor Red, where I'm not going to say who it was, we were on television and, on Daystar. I said, was it? No, it was uh, TBN. We were on television on TBN and, and we're sitting there and the guy that was going to come on and, 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 and speak to us you know, he was going to interview us on television. We were there. Oh, you guys are so super guys. You guys are super this, super that. So, <laughs> uh, this guy don't know me. <laughs> wow. I'm looking at Eddie, and Eddie's looking at me, and we're sitting there. I said, wow. I need to be on TV more often. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> look at this, look at this. Imagine, he says there, he will sustain you. 
Do you understand if you can get the Word of God? Listen to me. If you can get the Word of God and put the Word of God first in your life and allow the Word of God to penetrate your spirit, your mind, your soul, your everything. Listen, look at me. Look at me. He will make a way in every situation you got. He will do what no other can do. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I remember in 1988, the Lord spoke to me. I was driving for, for, for this company, and uh, I was distributing Mexican products all over, and, and the Lord spoke to me one day, and he told me, you, you got to quit your job and go full time. Hey. <laughs> the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Because I was working and doing the church. And the Lord says, you gotta, you got to quit your job and go full time. So I says, okay. So I got home and I, I told my wife about it. And she says, okay, go ahead anyway, I'm working. So I went ahead and quit. I went and met with the, the church. And we only had about 20 people. And I went and told the church. And they said, okay, well... You go ahead and take the tithes, the, the tithes with you, and we'll just put the offerings in the church. I said, okay. And so about, about a month went by or so, and my wife got breast cancer. And she, and she had to quit her job. She had to go through an operation and everything for breast cancer. Are you with me? So now we're both not working. Hallelujah. What a good place to be. <laughs> You're looking at me like, pobrecito. No, it was a good place to be, brother, because we had to trust the Lord. <laughs> brother, I was, I, was making, I was making more money from the tithing then the church was getting in for the Lord. And I saw that. And I said to myself, I can't do it like this. I know a lot of preachers would not do that. But I said, I can't do it like that. So I met with the board of the church. And I told them, you know what? I don't want, I don't want the tithing. And they said, why not? Is, is it not enough? I said, it's too much. He says, what do you mean? I says, I don't want it. I'm getting more than God. Amen. How many know when the offerings come up here, when the offerings come up here, do you, you know how much, look at all the people that's here, sometimes when the offerings come up here, you know how much the offering is? 50 bucks sometimes. Sometimes 100. And so the Lord was only getting a little bit, and I was getting the big chunk, and I said, no, man. I said, how, how many know I have to put God first? Yeah. I said, I, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be like that. So, so I gave it back to the church, and I said, you take two weeks and pray about it, and then you tell me what you want to give me. That was way back then, and you know what? I'm still getting that, and I don't complain. You know why? Because God has always met my need. Listen, I've been here in Denver 35 years, going on 36 years, and I've never had a complaint. The Lord meets my need. Oh, you better give Him praise. What a mighty God! He's a powerful God. Church, when he talks, when the word of God speaks to us, he speaks to, not just to me, but to all of us. He says, put me first. Put my word first. Put me in front of everything. Put me above all things. Let me be first. And see if I don't help you. 
Oh, brother, I'd rather have God help than anything else. Look at John 6, 27. Man, I'm still on my introduction. Look at this. Oh, you, don't, you guys don't want to read this. Huh? Look at that. You guys don't want to read that. I'm leaving it up there a little while so it'll, you can digest it. Now look at me. Look at me. It does not mean you don't work. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean God don't want you to work. He doesn't want you to put your job first. Say it with me. He has to be first. Number one, Jesus. I said, number one, Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly, but I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Him, Today, would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.